Yeah, first of all, of course, it's important to know that we are the first manufacturer that started mass production of the fuel cell car. And since 2013, when we first launched the car in Europe, we've now deployed over 250 cars in 13 European markets, which is unique in the, in the industry. But it's not so unique how the car is working because it works like any normal car. In the front you have the engine, in the back you have two tanks holding about 5.7 kilos of hydrogen. And the only thing is different is the type of refueling. You have here in the back a nozzle where you put the hydrogen station on and then you refuel the car on 700 bars which will last you for about 600 kilometers. So the biggest infrastructure is currently in, uh, in, in Germany because it's also the biggest European car market which is covering about 23% of all the market in Europe. But if you look to the rest of Europe, Denmark for example is our best practice where there are now seven stations and by the end of this year nine stations but there are already over 50 cars in the Danish uh, country. So it still takes quite a long time before we have a European covering network, but we have to take it step by step. Um, and we're making great progress in Denmark, Norway, Netherlands, but also since last year in France, in Paris, where we have the first hydrogen station, which is built by Air Liquide. Um, and we already have five taxis driving in the city, which give a lot of exposure to new potential customers in the future who can experience to not own the car itself but to drive as a passenger. And also later this year we'll launch a new project in Europe somewhere which I cannot disclose too much of but will enable also a lot of people to drive hydrogen cars. That makes also Hyundai quite unique because we are the only manufacturer in the world offering all powertrains, fuel cell, hybrid, plug-in hybrid and electric. All other manufacturers have more focus on one or just a few of all the available powertrains, but we really think that in each market there might be a different demand for a powertrain. In a small country where the speed is very slow and also the distance is very limited, an electric car could be a fantastic solution. But back again to one of the biggest car markets, Germany, where high speed, long distance, is really key to have a customer base. So you cannot last with a small electric car because the demand in the market is completely different. And also in Italy, for example, the demand might be completely different in the future. And that's why we are not betting on one horse, but we want to have a very wide array of possibilities to give the customer the choice of their zero emission choice, basically. Yeah, we have a huge task in the next couple of years to bring the requested uh, initiatives in the market. We also know that to be very uh, cautious if and what we want to implement to the car. For, for example, you only want to have an autonomous car if it's 100% crash proof. You do not want to have, it's not an open testing field. We are now engaged in several projects to make sure that we have the correct connectivity in the near future, autonomous driving in the future, and one of the things that you can already see in the current new Ionic is we have things like wireless charging. We have the, our first car with uh, Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto in the car. So those are the first steps, but of course will be increased dramatically over the next three to five years. Yeah, we see already now out of the more than 250 cars that we have delivered for of the hydrogen cars in Europe, uh, about 50% went to the hydrogen industry another 30 to 40% went to municipalities and the remaining part went to private companies or private persons. With the EV version of the Ionic, for example, we expect also that, that there will be a huge difference market by market, where in Norway, almost all electric cars will be used by private people, whereas in uh, Netherlands, for example, or Germany, almost all of the cars will be or used as user chooser or in Germany specifically as special pool cars, for example, because the incentive is not there for a private customer to, uh, to take the electric car. So country by country, there will be a huge difference. Do you think that's going to be taking so long? I think it will be rather sooner than later. Um, we already see some elements, of course, in all our cars, which are implemented with the crash de detection or lane departure system. We have in our, uh, on our sub-brand Genesis, we already have 
a lot of features integrated in our top line model, in our flagship model, where I'm all, of course with the cruise control, which is radar guided and lane departure system, but not only lane departure, but also guiding you in the lane. Uh, those are the first steps that will be increased and then you will go to true autonomous driving in the next, next few years. That's one of the elements that's also in the umbrella of Project Ionic. On one hand, today we have shown you the full lineup of the Ionic model and on the other, uh, basically Project Umbrella, there's Project Ionic which will show you and give also the public the possibilities not on far away futuristic things but easy implementable day-to-day -day use of future mobility. The details of that will be cover coming in the next couple of months. Yeah that will be the big task. I mean the, the, the big task is to get everything mapped and making sure that there's uh, no incidents and we are already having a big test facility in Korea doing so. Also with some future powertrains like hydrogen and electric car. So therefore I'm confident that in the next five years we will see a lot of progress in that field. Project Ionic, to sum it up in a few words, is a project based, is a mix between R&D and normal marketing to identify needs in the market and to also immediately implement them. And that's the biggest difference between a model lineup or a far away futuristic program because we try to do it really implementing day to day. The challenge will be to disclose too much about it because that's something which will happen in the next couple of months where we really show what Project Ionics content-wise will mean. Regarding electrified powertrains in the next future, um, until now it has been shown that it's really driven by taxation. There where there is a very big incentive to reduce the cost for the owner of operator of the electric or plug-in hybrid car, all the cars will go. We saw that with plug-in hybrids in some of the markets and with electric cars. But because the increased incentives in all the markets, it will be more of a general car. So the car will be hopefully more adapted in the next couple of years. And we also see that cars used by hydrogen owners or the electric car owners are much more confident on how they use the car and how they consume the car. We saw that already in the past with some hybrid users that because they are so much aware of the consumption of the car, they start to drive slower and also a lot safer. Um, but that's something which we really see a big difference in the different markets. Um, city driving is completely different than rural driving or intercity driving, high speed driving can be completely different in, in, in some countries.